Hi, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial number 93. Now in this tutorial we're going to continue on with our character movement script. So let's go ahead and open up Unity. So the next thing I want to do is have our character start moving forward and backwards. And in order to do that, I'm going to add a new component to our character. Uh, th there's basically three easy ways to get our character to move around. Uh, one is just to use the transform and you know have them adjust the transform according to the way we want them to move. Another way would be to come down to physics and add a rigid body and then we could just apply forces to our character. But a much simpler way would probably just be would be to add a character controller. And that's the method I'm going to take. So if we click on our character now, we'll look at it in the scene view. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to want to adjust this character controller. As you see, it's it's the capsule, green capsule. I'm going to want to adjust that to basically encompass my whole character. So I'm going to turn this uh, center. I'm, I'm going to move that down. So let's start off by moving it down, oh, probably about 1.5 units. Now it's going to be different for the models that you're using. So you'll have to sit around and fill around with it till you get it placed where you need it. Now that's not quite low enough. So I'm going to try 1.8 and we're getting there. I'm going to want it a little bit lower and it looks like it's going to have to be a little bit bigger. So under the should be a height somewhere. Height right up here. I'm going to make the size a little bit bigger for the height and move it down just a little bit more. I'm going to try negative two and that looks pretty good. Uh, it's a little too low now. So maybe 1.9. It's still a little low, but instead of watching me sit here and fidget with all the the variables, I'll just adjust that after the video. But basically, you want it to come to the bottom of your feet and to the top of your head. And the radius, uh, I don't need it quite that big. Uh, a little bit bigger than that. I'm going to want it about there. So when I hit play, pretty much his whole body is encompassed in it. So now that we have our character controller attached, let's go back into our script. And I'm going to want to get a reference to that to the player controller that we have. Now I'm just going to make this private. And so type character controller. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we're going to be moving our character potentially every frame. And I don't want to have to keep going and getting a reference to it. I'm just going to save it off and cache it. And I'll just call it controller. And then in my awake function, I'll just assign it. We'll just say get component. The component we want, which is a character controller. And this should be encompassed in the greater than less than signs and since we don't really want to bother checking to see if it exists or not let's actually add a line of code that will require this component be added and if it's not there it'll add it automatically for us so I'm going to come up here to right above where we have our public class and we can use the require component and then just tell it the type of component we want. Now we want a character controller and we'll have to tell it type of. Basically just telling it what type of controller we want. So in here we'll just say character controller. We'll save that off. We'll go back into Unity. Now there should be no errors. Now since we already have the script attached, it's not going to attach it for us. If you notice I've removed it. But if we remove our movement script and then try to attach it again, it adds it automatically for us. Now, of course, it did go ahead and change all of our or reset all of our values to zero. So you're going to have to put those in again. 
but it, it's a great way to make sure that you have a character controller attached to your game object if you're going to need it in a script that access it. So let's head back into Mono Develop. So I'm going to comment out the line for rotating. And I'm actually going to cut and paste the whole block and I'm going to go paste it right below. And now instead of checking the axis for rotating a player, we'll want to get the axis that we're using to move our character forward and backwards. So in case you forget what you've called it, you can just come up to the edit menu, project settings, input, and I called mine move forward. So I'm just going to add move forward. And it's checking the absolute value of the axis. And I am going to add the debug log here because I want to see. But we're not going to be rotating. So I'm just going to take that line out. I'm going to save it off. I'm going to go to Unity, make sure that that axis is working properly. So I'll hit play. I'm going to come over to my console. And I'm going to hit the forward key. And it's saying rotate zero. I should fix that debug statement. As you see here, I'm getting the wrong axis for my debug. So I'll put the right axis in. Save it off. We'll come back into Unity. Start it back up. I'm just going to clear this. And we'll hit the W key, or whatever key you have assigned to move forward. And we notice it scales up to a positive number. And then when you let go, it scales back down. Now let's hit the key that you have to move backwards. For me, it's S. And they seem to be working. So I'm going to come back into Unity. I'm going to comment this line out. Now I'm actually going to want to move that character controller, which is attached to our character, to move our character in game. Now if we were to go to the Unity web page for character controllers, you notice there's just a ton of stuff that you can do with them. And I'm not going to be covering all of them. Uh, just, actually, the, right now, the only I'm going to be covering is the simple move. And if you're feeling ambitious, you can go ahead and try to use the move function. But for me, I just want to use the simple move. And the simple move, if you look, it just takes a vector 3, which tells it the direction to move in. So I'm going to go ahead and mono develop. And I'm going to get my reference to the controller, which I called underscore controller. And then dot simple move and then tell it the direction I want it to move in. Now since I want the character to move forward, what I'm going to tell it to do is get its transform dot transform direction, which is the direction we're facing, and just say vector3 dot forward. Now if we were to save that off and go try it in Unity, it'll only move forward when we hit play. So as you see, he's moving forward and we're going to have to add a modifier for that as well because we don't want it to move that slow. But if you try to back up, you notice he still just keeps moving forward. And that's fine, we can fix that. What we're going to want to do here is add a modifier. So first off, the first modifier we're going to add is our input.getAxis move forward value. So this will tell us if the character is moving forward or backwards. So we're just going to multiply by that. Now if we save that off and go try it out, we should be able to move backwards now. So we'll hit play, hit the back key, and there we go, we're moving backwards, and we can move forward, plus rotate. Now let's add a, a public variable for a modifier for how fast we want to move. So I'm going to come up to the top here, and I'm going to put it right above rotate speed. And of course it's public, it's going to be a float, and I'm just going to call it move speed. And I am going to give it a default value of, oh, I don't know, let's just start it off at 5. And then I'll take this variable, and I'm also going to multiply down here by that speed. So if we went ahead and looked at our player, it should show up now, right here under our movement script. And let's try it out. That's actually a pretty good speed. And of course backwards. 
Okay, so if the speed isn't what you like, of course, you just go ahead and modify everything. And it looks like we're just passing the 10 minute mark on this video, so I'll save this one off and we'll start another one on how to get our character to strafe properly. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.